Good morning everybody. My name is Alex and my ham radio call sign is Whiskey America 2 Baker Mike Baker. I'm sure you will recognize the SB220 in the foreground here. I picked this up on uh, eBay. Now it looks halfway decent now but it was in rough shape when I got it. Uh, this video is going to be about what not to do when you get your SB220. And the first thing you should never ever do is plug it in and turn the uh, switch on because you have no idea what's going on with it unless a ham had you in his shack and demonstrated it for you and showed you that in actuality it does work. What right, you're looking at now is a capacitor bank. I redid it in my own style tried to save $150. I like to use the Harbox stuff, but uh, it's expensive. So what I did was uh, I got these capacitors off the internet. They're an inch in diameter. I popped them in the tube the way it's supposed to be. I should say holder the way um, the way it came from the factory. I had some serious problems and I'm going to show you what uh, what, what the major problem was. We're going to slip over here to the capacitors. Every one of these capacitors has been compromised. I didn't measure them to see if they're short, but every one of them is damaged. No good could come from you trying to plug this thing in. I replaced all the capacitors, all the resistors. Also, what I did was I reworked the metering board. I'll show you a better picture of that in a second. Okay, on this metering board, what you have to do is take a 16th inch drill bit and drill out the holes for the diodes. You don't have to worry about the resistors, they're fine. I populated them with the 5408 3 amp diodes and I replaced all the resistors with metal film resistors and I haven't replaced the 3.6K yet and the 1 ohm, I'm waiting for them to come in the mail. I just ordered them the other day. It's important that these resistors, that you check these because uh, mine were way off and uh, what they do is they give you uh, um, the voltage readings and you might, be ch you might be chasing a ghost. Uh, your meter may be telling you one thing and the uh, high voltage or the bias is, uh, is quite different. So that's one thing that uh, you really want to take this thing apart. Since you're going to take the capacitors out anyway and change them, there's no reason why you shouldn't take this out. And what you should always do is check the 0.82 resistor in the upper right. If that's burned out, chances are the Zener diode is burned out because uh, they had some kind of a failure. I always like to try and figure out why these units failed before I do any work on them. And uh, what I found on this was from D2 to D6, that's uh, the diodes on your left on the bottom, they were all open. D1 was uh, replaced by, the, by a former owner. Apparently it was open and he put a new diode in there. Now I don't know if he didn't realize that it was the capacitors that were the problem or, or what. But generally when you pop a diode it's because you got a shorted capacitor somewhere. Also, I found these. These are the parasitic um, chokes. I've never seen this before. The guy took three 91 ohm resistors and wrapped uh, a copper wire around one of them to act as the parasitic suppressor. I've never seen this before. I've seen one resistor used, but I've never seen three in parallel. So three in parallel would give you around, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 30 ohms. Now why you would do this, I have no idea. The only thing I was thinking of is possibly he was getting some arcing and he thought, or wrongly thought, that it was a parasitic but in actuality, it was his capacitors giving up the ghost. 
Now we're looking down at the hardest thing. I've already replaced the suppressors. What I found was, and something that you really need to check on, is this fan right here. The blade itself was turning, but the shaft was not. I, I had a funny feeling and I checked the shaft and sure enough it was frozen. So I had to lubricate the heck out of it and get the uh, get it to run uh, the right way. Also now we're looking at the sensitivity control. Controls the sensitivity of the relative power out. And that was frozen also. Uh, it's not actually absolutely vital but I did want it to work as usual. So uh, I used some uh, rust uh, breaker stuff that I have and uh, I think it was probably uh, liquid wrench or so. So I got that done and now it operates as uh, designed. Also right now we're looking down at the filament transformer. It was really rusty and I scraped it all down and I used a rust inhibitor on it. Extend rust and uh, is the name of the product and it turns the rust black so it makes it look much cleaner and nicer since you've already got the board out it doesn't hurt to go in there scrape a little bit and uh, add some of that rust preventative stuff also right now I'd like to draw your attention to the large coil every this is the third one I've worked on SB220 and that coil is always grungy looking and really awful looking especially like this guy who owned this was a heavy cigarette smoker I used to spend hours trying to clean that up with aluminum polish and everything but I found something that works very very well with little or no effort um, what you want to do is take a spray bottle fill it with regular household ammonia and about uh, a cup of water and uh, do this in a ventilated area you spray it on and uh, the stuff just melts right off. Also, back at the capacitors again, I had the same problem. The, uh, the capacitors just leaked all over this, uh, this white box type setup they have here for the caps, and it actually glued them together. Uh, I tried different cleaners on it, and it, I just couldn't get it to work, to, to clean up. And what I did was, again, the ammonia and water, I sprayed it on there, and I'll tell you what, that gunk just floated right off. I didn't have to rub it or scrub it. It worked incredible. I learned that from a lady uh, at our lodge. One day we were making a breakfast and uh, she said the best uh, grease remover was ammonia and, uh, and a little water. And I bought some ammonia and I put it aside and I forgot about it. And then this project came along and I decided to give it a shot and boy did it work. Okay, right now we're looking at the transmit receive relay. I found a, a problem with these sometimes. You have to be careful. And since you've got this thing apart, now's a good time to, uh, to fix it. Uh, clean this relay really well. Uh, you could tell it's dirty if you put uh, your ohm meter between the input and the output of the amplifier. It'll show, a, it could show a high resistance. And, uh, and it, when, you're, uh, ant when the signals are coming through, it'll sound like your uh, receiver's attenuator is on. If that's the case, get in here. I like to use uh, an acid brush that you get uh, with the plumbing supply stuff, you know, the, uh, the, the rosin uh, that you use for soldering and plumbing. And uh, I use the brush and something called Tarnex. I, I brush the Tarnex on these connections and then I rinse it off, I let it sit for a few seconds and then I rinse it off with contact cleaner and that cleans them uh, good as new. Now you have to absolutely make sure you remove that Tarnex. If you leave it on there it'll keep eating away at the contacts. That's something that you do not want. Okay we're going to talk about the metering again and part of that is your uh, selector switch for the uh, meter. This gets very dirty, it's usually black. I take Tarnex to that and I use a, uh, the acid brush. You can use a Q-tip, but I don't like that because it leaves strands of, co of uh, cotton behind. Get yourself the acid brush, they're real, real cheap, and uh, brush the Tarnex on there, give it a second or two, and then rinse it clean with uh, your favorite contact cleaner. 
Uh, if you're not close to an electronics store, uh, you don't have to order it over the internet. If you go to someplace like Napa or possibly Tractor Supply may have it. Um, it's good for cars with the computers in it. And if it can clean those contacts and not disturb that car computer, it should be just fine for your controls. If you don't clean this, you're going to get all kinds of wacky readings. Uh, and of course, that's not something that you want. Okay, I'm going to point out the obvious right now. The high voltage transformer is out of this thing. Uh, while you've got this apart, you have to disconnect the high voltage transformer from the capacitor bank. At that time, you can measure the secondary uh, voltage, or not voltage, but uh, you could ohm it out. It should ohm out between 15 and 20 ohms. Any more than that, you've got a problem with the uh, secondary. What ended up happening is I had a short in the primary of the transformer. Uh, I ordered a new transformer through Hammond, which is very expensive. Or, what I'm, another idea I'm working on is an external supply. The Drake L4B uses an external uh, supply, so why not make one for the uh, SB220? So I'm going to work on that. That's a future project. But uh, I checked the secondary. I never checked the primary. Also, what I wanted to talk to you about is when you bring one of these up, you must do it on a variac. A variac is a variable transformer that goes between your AC input and the rig. You could tune that up little at a time, and if you have a problem, you could, sh you could turn it off right away. You don't want a bunch of fireworks snapping and crackling and popping, uh, especially with this thing. You're talking about 3,000 volts here. Okay, so far you haven't heard me talk about uh, the high voltage and this and that, simply because this has not been plugged in. When I, when I bought it, I immediately took it apart to see if I could figure out why it failed. These two uh, tubes that are in here are the original iMac tubes. I have no idea if they're good, bad, or indifferent. I never got a chance to really test them that way. Also, when you take this top off, I removed the copper band, that's, that's the shorting band. There's a copper band that comes across this piece right here and shorts out the supply and kills the capacitors. What I would do if I were you, I would just go to each one of the caps and short them out. Now this thing probably hasn't been turned on since Dick Nixon was president. So I wasn't too concerned about it holding any charge. Plus the capacitors were so bad that I didn't think they could hold a charge. But it's not a bad idea to short them out. Uh, you can get a nasty burn or uh, you really don't want to take a hit uh, from any residual voltage that might be uh, in these capacitors. Okay, we're looking at, uh, you're going to see some white tape there on the back of the switch. I had to resolder that uh, wire back on. There's this wire that's piggybacked and it was broken off. So I had to resolder that back on. Also, while we're down here, what I did was I attached all these grids directly to ground. It's a grounded grid amplifier. Now, why the heck they put an RF choke in there and capacitors and all the rest of that nonsense when let's just ground it to ground? So that's what I did. They're each grounded separately. I did not ground them all together um, because I didn't want to take the chance on that one connection going uh, hinky and uh, creating a problem. This way, these uh, uh, pins, I believe, are all interconnected anyhow, but I wanted to make sure there was at least two grounded connections at any one time for safety's sake. Uh, I have not put in the step start yet. I will do that, uh, but because I bring it up with a variac to test it. I run all my amplifiers off 220, and I got a 220 volt variac. If you do not have one, if you cannot find one at a ham fest, the uh, 115 or the 130 volt jobs are very prevalent. You don't run into a lot of 220s. So I bought mine over the internet. I think it was around 100 bucks. It's well worth it. You want to bring this thing up just a little at a time. Otherwise, because uh, you have no idea. Uh, if you just take it out of the box and just throw it up on a bench and plug it in and turn it on, you have no clue what's wrong with this thing. And you're going to have all kinds of problems. In fact, I wouldn't even bring it up on a Variac uh, first time out. I would take it apart, take a look at the capacitors, take a look at the board, see if there's any damage. 
Um, so the last thing you want to do is turn this thing on. Plus, I have no idea that the tubes are any good. Before I shut the uh, rig down, the tubes were lit, so the filaments are good. But I don't know if, the old guys were pretty good when it came to tuning their rigs and everything. They didn't take an hour like these solid state guys do. It's really pretty amazing how long they'll sit on a frequency and tune up. Uh, so generally they knew how to treat uh, amplifier tubes. So uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if this was, uh, this was these tubes are much better than I, uh, than I figure that they are. They are the original tubes. I have no idea what kind of uh, setup, uh, what kind of condition they're going to be in. But uh, we're hoping for the best. It wouldn't be the first time I had to buy two new uh, amp tubes. But hopefully they they give me at least half, half output. Uh, so if you're trying to bring one of these back, um, there's cheaper ways to do it. Uh, like I said, I love the hard box stuff, but the capacitor bank alone is 150 bucks. So uh, putting new capacitors in there and clean up the old stuff cost me cost me $65. And uh, I may either make my own step start or I may end up going and, and breaking down and buying theirs. Uh, they're excellent products, they're just a little on the pricey side. But uh, actually their uh, monitor, their uh, metering board is not, uh, is not that bad cost-wise. But I just wanted to get in there and, and redo the old one that came out of this one. So I will get back to you when uh, I get this thing up and running. We'll see if it does anything. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, for now, I guess that's it. Uh, again, my name is Alex. I hope this was uh, helpful to you. Uh, the only thing I will remind you is do not plug this thing in and turn it on. Because you... Like the man says, it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. So uh, stay safe, be well, and 7-3 uh, Dwarf.